Welcome back guys to Season of Discovery Class Guides. Today by popular demand we have the Warrior. If you enjoyed the series make sure to leave a like and if you want to see a future class uh, covered let me know in the comments down below. With that being said let's get right into the Warrior. First thing we're going to cover the best in slot and we choose an Orc Warrior today. Keep in mind that the beast list might be a bit different based on what's available on launch on the game and also on what faction you play. So the helmet would be the Brutal Helm. It's a class quest, but I think it's only available for the Horde as far as I remember. Um, if you are Alliance, probably you want to get for the Humber's Helm, but also Humber's Helm, you might be able to get it only from the Neutral Auction House. If you're not lucky with getting those as Alliance, I think the next uh, best thing would be probably a pair of goggles from Engineering, uh, 9 Stamina, 9 Spirit. Moving on, the necklace, obviously the Hide Tide Choker, which is going to be available from the 10-man BFD. Easy to get. If you can't get that one in the first day, as it's going to probably be um, a weekly reset, just try to find um, a necklace of the Tiger from the Auction House. That's 4 Agility, 4 Strength. It's going to do you justice. Sparkle Shell Mantle. I kind of like this one, how it looks, especially on an Orc. It looks big. Uh, it's going to be hard to find. It's a BOE. Um... There are two types of shoulders that you can get off the Tiger with 6 Agility, 6 Strength, which is going to be Sentry and Battle Forge uh, shoulders of the Tiger. Keep in mind that what we're covering right now, it's mostly for PvE. If you want to go for PvP, try to go for something of the Bear or something of uh, something with a lot of stamina, basically. Uh, same thing, Cape of Brotherhood for the um, Cloak. It seems to be the best so far that I found. And for the chest we're going for the shifting silver blast plate and if you cannot find this first you have to go blacksmithing for this i would recommend going blacksmithing over uh, leatherworking uh, you get from this one 14 strength 6 stamina 1 percent heat and obviously a proc which has quite a good proc chance 25 percent to inflict a terrible curse we don't know exactly what does so far but i guess we're going to find out soon uh, if you don't get the mats to craft it in the first uh, reset you will still need the Shining Silver Blast Plate, which is 14 stamina, 6 strength, which is going to be the second best slot. But obviously, you're going to manage to craft this one as well. Or the Mutant Scale Breastplate from Walling Cavern. In terms of bracers, there's going to be another pair of bracers with 5 strength, 8 stamina, which is going to drop from uh, the same raid. We can also get like a, a BOE pair of bracers called Jorgen's Bracers, which are going to have 6 strength, 3 agility, 3 stamina. I'd probably prefer those ones, but um, you see what you can find first. In terms of weapons, we can uh, opt to go dual wield, or we can go for a two-hander. If you're choosing a two-hander, there are a lot of options here. I chose a green axe of the tiger, 360 speed level, 25 required, 7 agility, 7 strength, and 20 plus damage per second. I think the speed, the stats, and the damage is quite appropriate, and it's probably going to be easy to purchase from the auction house. The very next best thing would be the, well, it's called the, the Gizmotron Me Mecha Chopper. This used to be a BOE drop from Nomer. I'm not sure if it's going to still be available. Not sure if Nomer is going to be opened. So uh, we take that with a bit of salt. We're going to have a pull arm with 25 damage second and 8 agility from the BFD raid as well. And uh, a Phantom Blade, which has only a 2.5 speed. But it does have 1% chance to hit and also a weird proc. Even though it has a 250 speed, we're not really required to have a really slow weapon because we have level 25. We don't have Mortal Strike. We don't have a lot of... I think if you can get a Phantom Blade from the first week, this can be like uh, your bis. It's no big deal. Whenever they increase the cap, you're going to get like better weapons, slower weapons. I think a Phantom Blade, blade would be great for PvP. It would be great for... Uh, just playing with a new item in terms of dual wield here i think we have to go uh, for one handers here if you're playing an orc you might want to get well normally this hammer would be the best the windstorm hammer but it's a quest that sends you to scarlet monastery it's a long quest chain for horde outlaw saber might not be available available because uh, baron aquanis uh, might not be summoned this mace would be good Bezel Basher or uh, a couple of uh, axes like the Head Splitter, 
and then probably another one with good stats, uh, especially since you're an orc, if you're playing an orc. Hey, even this one, Vibroblade would work, for example, but there's that there, there better uh, items with stats there, probably. Look, for example, the Butcher's, butcher's Cleaver, it has uh, also 5 Strength and 2 Agility. 3 Weapon Damage on both of them. Moving on to the Gloves, I chose the Warlock Warsong Gauntlets, which is 10 Strength, 3 Stamina. But if you choose the Warsong Boots, which are 8 Agility, 6 Stamina, then you would have to go for a different pair of Gloves here. Probably something of the Tiger. The Cobra Grasps from... Um, Welling Caverns, 8 Strength, 3 Agility. Leggings of the Faithful from uh, the same BFD raid. It's going to be probably hard to get uh, all of them in a week. If you can't find those, try to opt for the second best. In this scenario, probably Glimmering Male Legards or just a normal pair of pants with uh, Strength and Stamina would do fine for the first uh, reset. For Rings, the Thunder Bro Ring, it's going to be a BOE. It's going to be probably quite expensive. And also the Silver Lane Family Seal. You can go here and get probably something from... Um, if I can find it here. There we go. Seal of Sylvanas. As Horde, you can get this from SFK Quest. Easy to get. 8 Stamina, 3 Strength. And obviously the, the Trinket. From uh, BFD. With Arena Grandmaster, obviously. And Ranger Bow, which is a 1 Agility Bow. For this level might be the best although this might be more useful on a hunter the first potential talents runes is spec for a warrior that we're going to check today is going to be a dual wield um <laughs> arms spec kind of uh three points into heroic strike three points into rent so we can get one points into deep ones i'm going to explain later why uh two points in improved charge and two points in improved overpower 50 percent crit at this level for overpower is going to be huge uh, remaining three points, we're going to dump them into Cruelty for extra 3% critical strike. Now, the first rune we're going to take is going to be the Blood Frenzy. Each time you deal Bleed Damage, you gain 3 Rage. So that means the Rend, each time it takes probably, it's going to be 3 Rage. But also, each time Deep Wounds, procs, and then Bleeds, we're going to get another 3 Rage. Um, the reason why we get the Improved Heroic Strike is probably that we're going to spam a lot of Heroic Strike because we're going to have extra Rage. Probably our rage is always going to sit, especially since we'll do a wheeling. Uh, our rage is going to sit about 50, about 60. We're gonna, always going to be in battle stance spamming uh, uh, Heroic Strike to be able to get those dodges. So we can spam uh, Overpowers into Deep Wounds. It's like a cycle. Heroic Strike, Overpower, Deep Wounds. Rage, Rage, Dumping Rage into... I think this is going to be great. Uh, the second rune we have, the Leg Rune, is going to be consumed by Rage which enrages you and grants you 25% melee damage bonus for 12 seconds up to a maximum of 12 swings, 12 swings after you exceed 80 rage. So as, as you can see, Blood Frenzy with Consumed by Rage kind of uh, have some sort of synergy. And then for the last run is going to be while dual wielding your physical damage and movement speed are increased by 10%. So not only that you have like extra movement speed, but 10% extra um, damage as well. The only problem I see with this spec is that we're going to lack a lot of hit. Dual wielding at this level is going to be strange, especially since the mobs from like BFD are kind of bosses and their uh, levels above. But I think this is going to be the DPS spec. I think this is going to be what people will use. It has the best synergy and it makes the most sense. Second build would probably have similar talents. At 25 for a warrior, you can't do a lot of things. You don't have mortal strike, you don't have sweeping strike. You don't have Axe spec, you don't have like in uh, Fury, you don't have uh, Blood Thirst, no Enrage, no nothing. So um, uh, the two-hander spec would be probably similar. Blood Frenzy into... Instead of this would be probably while wielding two-handed weapons, your attack speed is increased by 20%. And then into the last one would be probably Endless Rage which uh, you generate 25% more rage from all damage you deal. So here we have like a similar spec, the same talents. I, I, I still yet have to find a way. Unbridled Rat is not really worth it and uh, Improved Battle Shot doesn't really give that much either. So even if you're going for a dual wield spec or if you're going for a two-hander at this level, 
I think uh, we're going to use the same um, sort of uh, thing. 20% attack speed is quite huge. A permanent 20% with a two-hander kind of uh, helps a lot, but it can work as well with uh, Consumed by Rage too. For PvP, however, it might be a bit different because we have the Warbringer run and uh, a PvP arm spec would probably have Warbringer, which uh, your charge, intercept and intervene abilities are now usable while in combat and in any stance and it will remove movement and impairing effects when activated. This is a huge change for Warrior in PvP. It's going to probably make a huge difference. And then for the leg rune, you're probably going to go for Frenzied Assault as well for uh, that extra attack speed, uh, chopping those people. And obviously for, uh, for the other one, you generate 25% more rage from all damage you deal. It's quite great for PvP as well. Um, there's another option called Victory Rush. Uh, if you're doing like large scale PvP, if you're doing uh, some sort of uh, Warson Gulch, if you don't have a pocket healer, Victory Rush instantly attacks the target for 151 damage and healing you for 10% of the maximum health. It's only usable for 20 seconds after you kill an enemy which yield experience or honor. And last but not least, we have the tanking talent spec and runes, which uh, in my opinion can be really great. So the first thing that I saw here, we went for uh, a deep prot build because uh, we're going to be limited by a couple of abilities to be always wearing a shield and be in defensive stance. So we went straight for shield spec since uh, each time you block, you can generate one more rage. Um, we don't want to get rage started here. Improve blood rage into last stand. It's nice to have a cooldown all the time. One point into improved shield block. Uh, three points into toughness to get more value from the armor. Defiance, we have three points to generate... Um, more threat while in def defensive stance. I don't think anyone is going to pull threat from the warrior and you'll see soon why. If that's the case, you can go 5 out of 5 toughness and then get only 1 point into defiance or uh, get 1 more point into shield block. And then we get 1 more point into Sunder armor to reduce the rage cost by 1. The reason why we're going to do that is because we're going to have Devastate. Devastate is going to be a rune, hand rune, that is going to... When you're in defense, defensive stance, you have a shield equipped. Sunder armor also deals 100% weapon damage, and it's increased by 10% per application of Sunder armor already on the target. So as soon as you have five Sunder armors on the target, you're going to deal 150% uh, weapon damage with your uh, weapon. 150% weapon damage. Obviously, you're probably going to use a fast weapon so you can apply those things uh, fast. But I would probably go for a, a slower weapon, to tell you the truth. And um, I would combine the Devastate with Consumed by Rage, which enrages you and does an uh, extra 25% melee damage bonus. And uh, also Flagellation, which gains a 25% bonus to physical damage done for 12 seconds act after activating Blood Rage or Berserker Rage. So probably I would start with Berserker Rage, go into Defensive Stance to activate this. And uh, then use Blood Rage while uh, in combat to build that extra threat, more damage. I have a feeling that potentially Devastate Warriors might do more damage than the DPS Warriors Fury with uh, their attacks. Maybe this is just a theory of mine. I haven't tried it, tested, that, tested it yet, <laughs> but I think this is going to be fun to figure out. Um, judging by the way Devastate works here, I think Warriors at max level will be the best tanks better than Paladins, unless we're gonna check the Paladin as well, but so far the Warrior looks really great. Ah, this is it guys, this is the Warrior, let me know what you have in mind for the Warrior, are you going to go PvP, are you going to go dual wield uh, arms, are you going to go tank spec, are you going to get um, blacksmithing for the shifting silver blast plate? And keep in mind that at higher levels, you're going to get probably more recipes from with materials from different raids. You can only have one void touched uh, item, so you cannot get a leather working and blacksmithing to be able to equip both of them. Let me know what you think, guys. If you like the series, leave a like on the video. Um, if you want to see a next class covered in the next episode, let me know which class in the comments below. Find me live at twitch.tv slash prosadamus. And uh, if you want a guide to level multiple characters in um, Season of Discovery, there's a link in the description down below, Rested XP. 
uh, use my code Frostadamus, you get 5% off. I recommend the old classic era guide. If you already have that one, it's good enough. You're going to be able to use it to level multiple characters. Um, with that being said, thank you again for watching. Until next time, stay frosty. Bye-bye.